Hey there, this is Guru and I'm one of the co-contributors of the Vaku project. In this tutorial, I'll be introducing you to Vaku and following that we have dblockhead team who will be building a battleship game on top of Vaku. dblockhead team has been shipping out amazing guides and hacker tutorials in the previous hackathons and we are excited to ship out more such resources with Vaku. Vaku is a suite of robust censorship resistant communication protocols designed to enable privacy focused messaging in your Web3 apps. Vaku is private, censorship resistant, modular, adaptive, securely scalable and most importantly rate limited. Vaku is not just a chat messaging protocol but it can extend to a lot of other censorship resistant use cases where you require privacy. For example, gaming, marketplaces, state channels, and anything that requires machine-to-machine, machine-to-human, or human-to-human communication. In a nutshell, Vaku has two segments, the first one being the Vaku protocols, where developers can build applications on top of Vaku. And the second one is the Vaku network, which is the underlying infrastructure or the backbone of the whole Vaku ecosystem. Vaku has different implementations. We have a TypeScript implementation, a Nim implementation, a Golang implementation, bindings in Rust and C, and also a set of React hooks that can make your React development journey simpler. We have different protocols, and in this specific tutorial, we'll be looking at three main protocols, the first one being Light Push, Filter, and Store. Each of these protocols have different purposes. Light Push is used for sending a message into a content topic. Filter is used for subscribing messages from a content topic. And finally, store is used to provide temporary storage or persistence to your data. This is the whole uh, content topic architecture within Vaku. So we have different topics, uh, like we have topic A over here, topic B and topic C, where there are multiple nodes connected to multiple topics and it's highly interoperable. So this is the whole content topic architecture in Vaku. This is the way in which you define a content topic uh, based on the format that we've been recommending applications to. Uh, for example, you can see that the application name will be the first one. And then following that, we have the version and the category of the content topic. You can have different categories like notification, chat, and you know different categories for different things. And finally, the type of encoding that you use. So this is an example for the perfect content topic uh, that you should be pushing messages into. Brushing it up, we use light push for sending a message into a content topic and filter for retrieving or subscribing to messages from a content topic. And finally, store is providing temporary storage. Also may, uh, keep in mind that store should not be exploited for long-term storage. This is just for temporary storage and Vaku does not provide any reliability on the, you know, persistence of the messages. If you wish to know more about Vaku, make sure to check out the documentation at docs.vaku.org. We also have a learn section and a research section, which has the ongoing research uh, articles listed over there. And the learn section should also have a lot of conceptual docs. So make sure to check out the documentation. And if you have any questions, make sure to pop them up to the Vaku team in the Vaku Discord. So looking forward to see you there and also excited to see the dblockhead team building a battleship game. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can use Vaku protocol to build multiplayer games. As an example, we will be using Battleship, which, are, which is a popular two-player game, and we will be building that entirely using Vaku protocol and absolutely no backend. So on my screen, you can see that I have two players, Alice and Bob, who are part of a room with the ID 686. I'll begin by setting up the board for Alice and just placing the ships at random places and clicking on ready to play. Similarly, I will do the same thing for Bob. And once they place their ships and click on ready to play, uh, I will go back to Alice. And as you can see, when I click on a ship on the opponent board for Alice, it will update Bob's own board 
and also inform Alice that it was a successful hit. Similarly, on Bob's turn, if I hit one of Alice's ships, I will get feedback and the Alice's board will get updated. In the upcoming sections, we will start with the starter kit, which will have all the UI code ready and we will uh, slowly evolve it to a complete functioning game built completely on Mako protocol. Towards the end, along with the video, we also will provide you links for all the starter kit code and the complete project that you can use as a reference in your own projects. All right. So I'm going to begin by cloning the uh, starter kit. You can find it on our uh, GitHub account. The link should be alongside the video somewhere. And uh, let's start. So I'll just copy the URL here, go to my terminal and make sure my repository folder is empty and run git clone. Let's cd into the repo and run nvm use. It should set the version to 20 and run npm install. There we go. I'll quickly just start the server and go to localhost 3000 to take a look. All right, so let's click on begin. I begin by creating a new room. So there we go. And uh, I'll also copy this on to, I'll create another user called Bob and Bob will join this room. So now I have two players in both the rooms. And as you can see, each player has their own board and the opponent board. So the player board is basically where Alice can set their ships and the opponent board is where you can attack Bob's ships. Right now I'm clicking on it and nothing's happening, but we will configure that using Baku. All right, so let's also take a look at what the code looks like. So I'll just open it in VS Code for now and quickly walk through everything. So let's look at these pages. So you'll notice there are two URLs here. There's one with the room and then there's the other one with join. So when you create a new room, you enter in the room. It's represented by the room folder and the page here, actually the ID page here. And similarly, join will also have a page uh, here which is the one that Bob is on. Both of these pages are going to have a, a container which will basically contain a player board and the opponent board. So these two components. And uh, another thing to notice here is that the only difference between the two is basically the player that is being passed. So in join, we are passing player two and in room we are passing player one these are how this is how basically the container distinguishes between which player is which and uh, the idea is that whatever logic we write for one player will basically be more or less the uh, same for the other player now the player board has uh, uh, imported a few utilities from game utils we will come to them in a while and it has the board set up at the bottom so we will slowly start to code all of the logic here. Similarly, the opponent board has an empty board without too much of code. That is because most of what the action that will happen in the opponent board, which is just to remind you, the second board here will be coded using Waku. So in the next sections, we'll start installing all the required dependencies for Waku and start writing the logic for the game. All right, let's begin by installing our dependencies for Wahoo. I'm going to go to my package log JSON and I'll copy a few dependencies onto this and then explain what they are. So the first two dependencies that we need are Wahoo React and Baku SDK. So the, we need some utilities from the SDK and the main uh, package is going to be Wahoo React, which will provide us all the required components and hooks. We'll also need another library called protobuf.js. 
So let me just copy that as well. There we go. So these three libraries collectively are all that we are going to need. You will notice that I'm using a very specific version for Vaku React. This is because uh, it has the most stable uh, configurations and code snippets. And I have not had any issues with this so far. Once again, you will find this in the completed uh, uh, project demo in a link that is attached to the video. Now that I have all the dependencies set up, I will just run npm install and wait for a few seconds while all these dependencies install. Might take a few minutes because these are pretty large libraries. There we go. So before we can start coding, there are a few uh, required uh, components and dependencies that we need to set up. So we'll begin with that. So first of all, I will go to my layout PSX. This is where Next.js mounts the entire project. And uh, we will set up the top level component called the live node provider provided by Vaku React. I will wrap the entire HTML in this. Now the light node provider takes two, there are two props. First is options. We'll define that. And then protocols. Oops. Protocols. So let's start defining them. In options, we'll pass default bootstrap equal to true. This will take care of setting up all the multi adders and how Vapo connects to nodes. And in protocols, we'll pass an array that contains protocols dot light, uh, light push, I believe it's called. Uh, so one is protocols dot filter and the other one is, yeah, protocols dot light push. So what do these protocols do? So light push basically allows us to send messages and filter is how we are able to retrieve these messages. I'll just remove this disk from here. For some reason, it wasn't importing directly and get started. So along with this, another component that we need to set up is the content pair provider. So let's go to our uh, page components inside room. And so in this page component, I'll set up the content pair provider and I'll do the same for <clears throat> both my pages, which is the room page and the joint page. We will wrap both of them in content pair providers and make sure they're imported. So you will see a red line because it requires a content topic that we haven't passed. So let's pass it a content topic, which is, let's call it Waku Battle Ship Tutorial, followed by a room ID. Let's also copy that in the page component. And let's talk about what this component, this actually does. So you will see that the room ID is not defined. Let me quickly define that. So the room ID, if you remember, let's go back, is coming from our URL. This is how we will distinguish which room the two players are in right now. So we just do search params.id as string. And that should be that. Let's also copy this over. Looks like we've already defined it in the join room so we don't need to do anything here so let's let's talk about what the content pair provider actually does so the content pair provider basically takes this prop called the content topic and this is how we will distinguish our messages from all the messages going over the nodes over which we are talking so in Baku, all nodes basically retrieve and send all messages and we distinguish between the topics for our app using the content topic We've added Baku Battleship Tutorial slash Room ID as the topic so that when we are playing the game, we can distinguish which messages are actually part of our game. Now that we have this set up, we can start to actually uh, define uh, some React hooks that we will be using to communicate on Waku. Let me quickly go over a few things. All right. 
So to define the hooks, I'll go into the container component and basically uh, use three hooks that we need. The first hook that we will need is called use waku. It returns three things and error. So it returns a node is loading and error. Along with that, we we'll also get our decoder and encoder from use content pair. Uh, we also need a third hook, which is messages. We'll call it filter messages that comes from use filter messages. And this will take our node and the order. There we go. So let's talk. Oops, it's supposed to be in order. There we go. So let's talk about these three hooks. The first hook that we're using is use vacuum, which basically provides us the node that we will be using for the communication. The use content pair hook provides us a decoder and encoder, which we need to decode and encode our messages. And finally, uh, use filter messages provides us the array of all the messages that are being sent over the content topic we had defined in our previous section. So yeah, this one. Great. What I'll do is I'll pass uh, the node to my player board so that I can use it there. along with all the other three. We don't immediately need the encoder decoder right now, but we'll pass them as we as and when the need arises. Next up, I'll just quickly go inside and define these in the props as well. I'll just say node can be any is loading is going to be a boolean and then error again can be any. This should take care of the errors. There we go. Next up, we need to define the messages that we will be sending. Let's go back to our UI. So the first message that we want to send is that the player one has joined. This message should be fired as soon as this page loads. Similarly, when player two joins the room, they should fire P2 joined. Let's define a message for that. And then we will use Waku nodes to basically transmit that, that message. Okay, now that we have our basic node set up, we can start sending our first message. Let's go into the player board and uh, let's minimize all these predefined functions. So, okay, another one, another one. There we go. Let's define a function called const send message. It's going to be async. It will take a sender as a string. And then a message, which will also be a string. And it will do three things. It will first create a message. Then, oops, it will serialize the message. Finally, use push to send the message. For this, we will need to do two things first. We will first need to create that message and then use the push function provided by another Waku hook to actually send it. So at the top here, I am going to say const push is equal to use light push. And light push will basically take the node and the encoder. Should not be given an error. Ah. I need to pull these from the props. Node encoder, oops, encoder equal to props. Wow, we also need to define the encoder here and pass it down from the container as well. There we go. So now that we have a push function, which is what we are going to use for the third step, let's also go about creating the message. Let's define this message in our utils. So I go to game utils and at the bottom, I'll say const chat message is equal to 
on you. So, to define our message, let's first import the protobuf.js library. So, I'll say install import protobuf from protobuf from protobuf.js and uh, let's define chat message equal to new protobuf, oops, protobuf dot type and we'll give it a title or name we'll just call it chat message and uh, we'll define some properties on top of it we do that by uh, using add so add will take a new protobuf dot field and the field thing field uh, function will take a uh, name of the property so we will add a timestamp a key for it and then the type for timestamp it will be un64 similarly we'll add another field which is going to be the sender which is going to be a string and it will have a key let's copy that over again and say message this will be the actual message that we send and finally i'll also add let's go change the key three we'll also add id which is again going to be a string and this is how we will distinguish between our messages. So we use protobuf here to create messages that Baku protocol can understand. It will become more clear once I start using them. So let's go back to our player board. Uh, oh, let's export it from here. Chat message. And then let's go back. And we can go about creating our first message. So what I'll say is const new message is equal to chat message dot create and the create function will take the keys that we defined in the definition of chat message first is timestamp which is just going to be date dot now the second is going to be the message which we are taking as a function param the sender again is a function for ram and for the id i will use crypto dot random uuid after creating the message, you also need to serialize it. And we do that by saying const serialized message is equal to chat message dot encode uh, new message dot finish. And we will send this uh, using the push function that the Vaku hook provides. So just to keep ourselves error safe, I'll say in push defined const res uh, push res is equal to await push and it will take two properties. It will take its own timestamp. We are going to use new date for that and then the payload which is going to be our serialized message. And uh, after that we'll also log pushes to see uh, what we get when we send a message over Baku. Let's get rid of these two comments. And now that we have our send message function, uh, let's go at the top and define an effect. So the first message we will send is when the page loads and the Baku node is available. So I'll say when is loading, Okay, let's put it here because I need props. So is loading. And it, we use is loading here and say if is loading is completed, call send message with player, which again we'll get from the props. From the previous section, you will remember that player is going to be either P1 or P2, and the message is just going to say joined. With this setup, let's see how this works. I am going to go back to my browser and I'll open inspect element to see what's happening here. Close this out and hit refresh. 
So you will see that ignore Vaku socket connection failures appears. And this generally uh, is added just so that you understand that Vaku tries to discover peers and some of them are expected to fail. Every once in a while, you will see errors like this. And this warning is just there to make sure you don't worry about them. So looks like our push function threw an error. We need to handle this because sometimes even though the Vaku node has connected, let's look at the status of the Vaku node as well. So I'll also log the node and the error, which I'll pull from the box again. See what's happening. Let's hit refresh again. So right now they're both undefined. But finally, we have our nodes and now you'll see that the error which we were getting before when sending the message is gone. So every once in a while, it's possible that you might successfully connect to a node, but it will fail when trying to send an error. So those errors are captured in the response of push function. And we'll add a very simple handling for that. So let me just call it res. And there we go. So all this uh, little if statement is doing is that in case we connect to push, but it fails, in case it connects to Baku, but it fails, we will get an alert saying that unable to connect to a stable node and please reload. This is just so that, you know, uh, you know, during the first message, if something fails, we can just refresh and start again. Let's try again now. See what happens. So the nodes are right now, the node is undefined right now. This time the message went through. We got recipients and no errors. We have successfully sent a message over the Baku protocol. And in the next sections, we will start to see how we can look at these messages and start consuming them in the logic of our game. Now that we sent our first message, let's see how we can start to use it or see it on our screen. For that, I'm going to use this hook called use filter messages, again provided by the Vaku React library. It returns a, a value called messages. Uh, I've just renamed it to filter messages. So let's try to console log and see what we get here. I'll just wrap it in an object so, which should make it easier to find. Uh, let's go and refresh our page and see what we get. So when the page loads, it's zero, but eventually when the first message is sent, it should get populated with something. Hmm. Looks like that did not happen. Let's try that again. Okay, some error. This is why we added the error handling when trying to send a message. So we can just refresh and try again. There we go. So once the message was sent without an error, we get it in filter messages. Now you will see that this is a decoded message, but we still can't really read the content that we had sent in it. For that, we need to use a chat message that we had defined to decode this. So what I'll do is I'll create a use effect here. Let's get rid of this console log. We don't need it anymore. And it will run when filter messages change. And <clears throat> what we will do is define a decode message function and then map over filter messages using decode decode message function. Great. So let me go to my game utils function file again where I had defined the chat message and let's define a function called const decode message, which will take a Vaku message of property of type any. And uh, let's fix the indentation a little bit. And also export this function outside. Cool, let's start to define it. So the Vaku message, basically, if you see here, each message will have a payload. <clears throat> what we will do is we will pass this payload. There we go. So in the proto, you will see a payload, which we will start to decode. This contains the entire body 
as a uint array. Let's go here and say if waku message oops waku message dot payload is empty. Uh, let's console dot log no payload now and return an empty object. Below that, if it is not empty, we will basically uh, let's wrap it in a try catch block. Uh, catch e and a what we will try is basically extracting the timestamp the sender the message and id from chat message dot decode baku message dot payload and then we will just return these values as we get them from the decoded message. So all this function is doing is using the chat message that we have defined to decode uh, the Vaku message that is being sent to it. So it will become more clear once I start using it. So let's get on with that. I'll just also log the error in case something comes up. Error while decoding. And I log it here. Let's go back to our container. And uh, let's say const decoded messages is equal to filter messages dot math and decode message. Finally, let's log the decoded messages and see what we get. We can also get rid of these comments and yeah. Let's save all our files, go back to the browser, clear the console and hit refresh. So right now the decoded messages is empty. We've got a first message and then there we go. Inside decoded messages, we now have message joint, timestamp and the sender is fever. Let's also look at what's happening in the uh, other pair room. Let me hit refresh here. And it's going to try to connect to the VAPU mode. And we have another decoded message here, which is message join timestamp this and the sender is people. What's interesting is that <clears throat> both of these messages are only differed by the sender. So in theory, what is interesting is that both of these messages should come up in decoded messages because we are sending them over the same content topic. So let's try to debug that. Uh, let's make sure that both join are uh, using the same room ID as the room page here. Oh, I see. So it looks like uh, the room ID here is different from the room ID here which is why they're sending over different content topics. Let's copy the room ID from Alice's room and paste it over Pop's room. I'm going to clear the console, hit refresh again. Now, in the decoded messages, while Bob is only getting P2 joint, let's see the decoded messages for Alice, where now both P1 and P2 joint are appearing. What's happening here is that since Bob joined the room a little late, he did not get all the messages that Alice sent. However, since Alice was already in the room, she got access to messages sent by both Bob and Alice. The way the filter messages works is that it only transmits messages after you have joined the room. So all the messages sent before you have joined the room are permanently lost which means that Alice has access to both these messages, but Bob who joined a little late only has access to the one message that he himself had sent. Now that we have these messages, we can use this component on the right side to start rendering them as well. Uh, we'll go back to our container and you'll see that there is an empty UL list at the bottom here, which we can use to render the messages. I'm going to copy some code in HTML and CSS and then explain what it is doing. So uh, we are going to loop over the messages and for each message, we are going to create an ally tile. To make it look more like a chat, what we will do is that 
all the messages whose sender is P1 show up on the left and all the messages whose sender is P2 show up at the right. Then there is some styling and then a P tag to identify the sender and the message contained. There we also need to define these messages. So what I will do is I will create another state at the top called messages set messages you state is going to be empty in the beginning and the decoded messages will be used to set this up decoded messages great so it's throwing an error let's try to understand what that is type undefined is not assignable to type never hmm. all right so in the beginning since decoded messages are empty we need to add a safe check so only set them when they are defined hmm. interesting all right uh i think i know what's happening so we have a message type here let's see if we had defined this in a starter kit yeah so the message type actually contains all the properties and a few extra ones we will start to eventually use in the state, let's say its type is going to be message array. And its initializes are empty so that it handles undefined as well. Hmm. Looks like it still has some problem with it. Let's try a different syntax. Okay. That doesn't seem to work either. Uh, type undefined is not assignable to type message. Thought it's an array of messages. Oh, I see. Let's go back to decode message, see what this returns. In case it is empty, it's returning an undefined. Hmm. Let's return an empty object instead. But it's not gonna have properties that we need. To make our life simpler, let's do this and does this work? Yeah, no. <clears throat> let's say it's going to be as message array. Hopefully this will not crash in runtime, but we'll find out. <clears throat> now that we have rendered our messages at the bottom, what's the problem here? Object is possibly undefined. So let's say messages and, and that should take care of it. Now let's go back to our browser, go back to the main page, hit refresh. We should send the P1 join message and it should have shown up. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, let's go to Bob's page, hit refresh here. And it says P2 joined here and P2 joined here as well. Now let's try something else as well. Ideally, Bob should also be aware that Alice is joined and vice versa. So right now, Alice knows that Bob has joined because they're getting both P1 joined and P2 joined, but Bob doesn't know that. What we'll do is we'll assume that the joiner of the room always knows this. So we won't be handling for that right now, but you can modify the game logic accordingly. Finally, so now we have a stream of messages going back and forth and both Bob and Alice can inform each other that they have joined the room. Next up, what we will do is when both of them set the board, they will send a message called, let's call it P1 ready and P2 ready. This will be transmitted when they click on ready to play. Right now, nothing happens when we click on ready to play. So let's go and code that. I will go back to my editor inside the container. I will go back to my player board. I will look for ready to play. 
and as you can see this button already has some logic to ensure that it can only be pressed when all the ships have been placed so we don't need to modify that but on click i will say send ready to play let's go to the top and define this function here it doesn't need to take any props <coughs> because only it only needs to send one function let's make it async and then it will reuse our send message to send player ready <coughs> all right so let's see if this works well, i'll go back to my board i'll hit refresh here i should see p will join any second now it's still loading trying to connect to a node that's why we see these undefined sometimes it takes longer than other times but that's nothing to worry about generally refreshing a couple of times fixes the problem there we go so we have p1 joined let's refresh bob's page and see if they are able to join or not see it threw an error when trying to send that message but since we are capturing it all we have to do is hit refresh so that all our subsequent messages also do not fail when trying to send looks like it's happening a couple more times but we can fix it by just refreshing there we go so now both players are joined i'm going to set the ships for player one and click on ready to play that should have sent a message not sure if it went through or not hmm. let's try that again hmm looks like we're gonna have to do some debugging so when i originally sent player ready i used this so send ready to play hmm. it's throwing an error here Wow, oh, it's on click. Yeah, should work now. Let's try hitting ready to play again. There we go. This should be available here as well. So now when I set the board for pop <clears throat> and press ready to play, there we go. So now both the players are ready. Now that we have uh, a state where both players can inform each other that are they have set their boards we can now actually start to write some game logic and what we'll begin with is hiding this opponent board this opponent board is how you will start hitting the ships of your opponent so alice should be able to click on the board here only after bob has sent their board and bob should only be able to hit alice's board once alice has clicked down ready to play so what we will do is we will go back to our container and kind of hide the opponent board so let's write some pseudo comments hide the opponent board until both players are ready to define a function called is game ready which will check whether both players have sent ready message so let's say we define that function it will look something like this is game ready and and the rest of the logic now it looks like we've already defined this function so let's make sure we have its definition yep so let's just import it ah it's already imported and what is it asking for it's asking for messages so we can send the decoded messages to this <clears throat> okay so let's add a save check there we go <clears throat> and let's look at what is game ready is doing 
we can get rid of this comment. So first it is plucking out the sender and message from each sender and message from each of the game messages. And then to check whether player one is ready, it's looking for a message which says the uh, ready and the sender is P1. It's also checking whether P2 is ready using the same method. And then it's just uh, returning P1 ready and P2 ready. So what this means is that the opponent board should now only render when both player one have clicked, both player one and player two have clicked on ready to play. Let's go and see that in action now. So as you can see, the board at the bottom is hidden now because you know both the players are not ready yet. Let's you know what? Let's also add a loader. We are right now have to rely on this undefined to make sure that the page is loaded. Instead of that, I will go back to my container and uh, use this is loading prop that the hook provides. So I'll say if is loading requirements spinner. This is just a basic loading component which is available in the starter kit, so you can use it. Now, when I click on refresh, you will see this loader until the Vaku node is successfully connected. Okay, looks like there was an error when trying to send a message, so we will hit refresh again. Hey, let's try one more time. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, it looks like the message was sent, but for some reason did not appear in our decoded messages. This occasionally happens, so it's nothing to worry about. Generally, refreshing it should cause the issue to go away. Da -da -da -da. Hmm, Kun would seem to be failing more than usual right now. There we go. Looks like it's in the message twice this time. No worries. Uh, as long as it happens once, we should be fine. I'll also do the same for Bob. Make sure that they have joined. There we go. We can fix uh, why this message seems to be going twice, but we can do that later. Now I'll set the board for Alice and click on ready to play. This should be sent as a message, but for so ah, there we go, it's showing up here. And similarly, when I click on Bob's mode and press ready to play that should show up here and voila our opponent board starts to show up since both players have clicked on ready to play that means they have both set their votes and they're inviting the other person to start taking hits on you know their respective votes in the next section we can start to code the fun part of the game which is where when i click on the opponent board i want to see some feedback that i've either hit a ship so if Alice was to click on, let's say, this uh, this cell right here, it should say hit or miss, depending on whether Bob has placed a boat on their board or not. All right, we will start to cover that in the next section now. All right, we are done with the part where both players can inform each other that they're ready to play. Now we are going to move to the part where when they click on one of the tiles in their opponent board, they should get a response. So let's write some to-dos on what we need to do. First, when player clicks on opponent board, transmit that move to the other player. Then the second player needs to calculate if 
the move was a hit or miss. Finally, the second player needs to send the hit or miss to the first player. What we'll do is that, let's say Alice clicks on a tile on the opponent board. That message will be sent to Bob and Bob will check whether one of his boots was hit or not. Then Bob will send a reply to this message saying whether this was a hit or not. Along with that, Bob will update his own board and also Alice's opponent board will get updated with the hit or miss. So let's start coding that part now. I will begin by going to the opponent board and so in each of the tiles I will say uh, on click send move message uh, let's do something here we will wait this send move message function will take the row index and the call index so we will be sending these two properties through the send move message let's also define the send move message function let's make it async and we will use a similar strategy that we had used in the player board when we were sending ready to play and joint but we will create a new message for this so let's go back to our game utils and uh, I will copy the chat message once and this time we'll call it move message it will we will name it move message here as well so along with the timestamp sender id we will send a move which will be a string and let's change the id to five just so that it is different from our chat message so the move will basically be let's say they hit the first cell the move will look like zero zero if it's the second cell of the first row it will be something like one zero and so on and so forth so now that we have this defined what I will do is I will go to player board and uh, copy this function, send message function, and we will you know modify this in opponent board. So we have this here. Let me just copy all the content of this function and get rid of it. And let's paste it inside say move message. We will replace it with move message. Oh, okay. We need to export move message similar to how we exported chat message so that we can import it in our board. So message, then instead of sender, we will be sending a move. So let's say send move message is taking a row index and call index these are both going to be numbers we will convert it to uh, so this is the sender which is going to be our player well, let's extract the player from our props and we also need the use like push so i'm again going to copy use like push from our function here and it will also need the node and the encoder let's call them any any and extract them here from the props Let's also import use like push encoder. There was spelling error. Finally, let's make sure that in the container we are also passing a node and encoder as props. Great. Now we'll go back to our opponent board. Let's also replace chat message here with move message and the rest of the code you will see is going to be identical we will use push from use like push to send the message we will console log the rest we actually don't need it 
we already have error handling so we can get rid of that and let's see how this works we also need to use this function here oh, oh so for the move let's define this by saying row index comma call index great uh, we also have this move and set move defined here we will come back to why we need to set these but for now when user clicks on send move <coughs> we will also set the move here in the state we are actually setting this move in the state as well so that when we get a reply we know what was the last move that the user played it will make more sense when we once we start to code that but for now let's see what happens when we do the send move message from here i will go back to my browser uh, let's hit refresh. So Alice is going to create the room again. Any second now. Let's try refreshing. There we go. So we're getting P1 joined twice. We can debug this later, but let's also get Bob to join the room. Okay, some error. Let's refresh. Error again. Let's refresh again. There we go. So both Bob and Alice have joined. I'm going to set the shifts for Alice first. Click on ready to play. Which should have, sh which is shown up here. Similarly, I'm going to set the shifts for Bob. Add some positions and then click on ready to play. Now that both players are ready, we have the opponent boards lined up. Uh, Let's click on, okay, so Bob has it in the second row first column. Let's click on this box and it has sent the message. That message is not showing up here. Let's see why that is. So I will go back to my container and aha. Uh -huh. So we are only uh, logging the message.sender so but it's possible that the message does not have a message instead it has message dot uh, move so when i do this hmm, i wonder why that failed how it's not the decoded messages so i am getting the move here but for some reason it's not showing up here so let's see what might be causing that let me try to log the messages to make sure that all the messages are getting stored in this all right looks like they are let's go back at the bottom so in the last message we don't have the message key but the move key so this should have rendered but for some reason it did not let me just to debug get rid of this Hmm. What happens if I save it? That's interesting.
This is interesting. Let's try to change positions. See if we get that. Curiouser and curiouser. Oh, I see. This seems to be a CSS issue. So it's only scrolling in the top half. We can fix that later, but we are getting a message here. So, and we should be getting a message here as well. Let's move on to handling this. So what Alice has done is sent a move and we need to handle that move for bound. So let's go to the player mode because that is when the moves need to be handled. And what we will need to do here is let's write some to do's down. We first need to get, get the latest message from the filtered messages because only we, we can only compute over the latest message. If we, if we try to compute over each message, then the ring moves will keep repeating. So we will get the latest message. Extract the move from the latest message. If the message contains a move. And finally, if the move was a hit or miss, handle that on the player board UI. Great. So let's go back to the container. And uh, in the messages, what I will do is every time I'm setting the messages, I'll also get the latest message. So for that, I will go to my utils. I have already defined a function called find latest message. What it basically does is it looks at the timestamps and compares each message and returns the latest one from it. So <coughs> let's create a new state called latest message set latest message equal to use state it will contain a type message and it can be empty because in the beginning the messages array is empty so it decoded messages set latest message find latest message decoded messages why is it throwing an error Hmm. Okay, so let's do this. Find latest message and add. Okay. Const latest message. Decoded messages. Type undefined. Oh, wait. I'm trying to use the state variable. Type undefined is not assignable to type message. That's interesting. Hmm. I keep forgetting how it's a good I think this should fix it. What's the issue? Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna do what I did at the top in order to skip the time to debug. And yeah, so the latest message will be set in this state then. I will also pass this latest message as a prop here. And in the player board, uh, I think we'll need it eventually in the opponent board as well. So I'm just gonna pass it here as well. And then I'll go into the player board, define latest message as message. Let's make it optional. Why the error? Okay. Let's import this type and latest message. Similarly, in the opponent board, 
you say latest message optional of type message and extract it from the box here too now let's go back to the player board see what we get in the latest message uh, somewhere here so i'm going to define another use effect which will run when the latest message changes and we console log the latest message let's go back to our browser go to filter so right now it's undefined uh let's see if it's defined for alice should not be cool let's uh, try refreshing our board creating a new room uh, and then start the all over Sometimes the vacuum nodes can take a while to connect. What I found is that the best way is to just to refresh. Nine out of ten times that does fix the problem. Yeah, there we go. So I'll also get Bob to join because now we are at a stage where both players need to join and click on ready to play in order for the game to progress. All right, so both players have joined. I'm gonna set the board for both of them. I'll just put all the ships in one corner, and the one is sent ready. Similarly, I'll set the ships for player two and click on ready to play for player two. Now we have opponent boards on both cases. So let's see what we get when I click on the first tile. Hmm. It looks like the latest message did not update, but I am seeing the move in the messages array. Let's go look at our uh, code for the find latest message. So, ah, I'm just setting it back in the state. There was a mismatch in the variable names. Let's see if we get something in the latest messages now. Okay, let's try sending another message. There we go. So as you can see in the latest message, now I have move sender P1. Now P1's moves will be handled by P2. So when Alice makes a move, we need to when Alice makes a move on the opponent board. Bob needs to handle it in his player board. So I'm going to go back to the player boards. And that is where we are logging the latest message. I'll define a function called handle latest message, which will just take the uh, message as a message type. We will make it async. And <clears throat> if now, what I will do is check if the sender is not the same as the player. So when Alice makes a move, only Bob needs to handle it. So I need to make sure that in the message, the sender is different from the actual player. So after that, if message has a move, we, we need to calculate if the move was a hit. So let's start coding this part. So I will begin by if message or sender not equal equal player, or actually let's add an early bailout saying return. So if the message sender and the player are same, we don't need to do anything. If also if the message does not have any moves, we can return as well because we only need to add moves in the player build. Finally, let's say, uh, let's move to the second uh, point here. We need to calculate if this move was a move or a hit. So to define that, let's say we, we need to see if the move that is coming, remember, 
the move will basically have the row index and the column index. So let's define a function called cons does oops does ship exist on which will take row index and call index. Let's make the numbers and call index, which will be a number again. And we also need the board for this. Okay. I think we will have to define this function at the bottom because we need to. Oh, uh, never mind. Let's just define it here. And it will also take the board. And all it will do is return boolean of row index. So board row index call index. Uh, board is going to be of type number this and this. So what is this doing? Basic. Hmm. Okay, looks like I've already defined this function as part of the starter kit. Let's get rid of that definition for now. Yeah. So what is this function doing? Basically, it's going to take a row index, it's going to take a column index, and it's going to take the board. Now, on the board, each cell is by default defined as zero, except for the ones that have a ship. So if a ship exists on the specified row and call, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So we will say if does ship exist on, let's extract the uh, all. So I'll extract the row index from the message book. I'll say parse int underscore message dot dot move dot split comma and zero. Since the move looks like this, the row index is the first property that we are extracting and then just converting it into a number. Similarly, I will do the same thing for call index, except this will be the value after the comma. I'll pass them to row in the, the function and I'll also pass in the board. And if it if our ship does exist, what we will do is we will create a new board where <clears throat> uh, which will come from uh, let's deep clone this board and let's make it a let. Then in the new board, in the row index, call index, we will set the value as x. So if a ship exists on the move that was played by the opponent, we will replace that cell, uh, that cell with an X just to indicate that the opponent has hit one of your ships. Let's see if this starts to work. Finally, we also need to set the board and we will set it with the new board. Let's go back to the browser and see it in action. So right now, nothing has happened. Uh, let's make a fresh move. Uh, that move went through. And nothing worked here. Why is that? Hmm. Let's try to debug. Ah, we are not using the handle latest message function. So I'll call it in the latest message hook that we have defined. And I'll say if latest message call a function. Boom. Let's try sending a new message again. Hmm. Looks like nothing happened. Let me just try with a different cell. Okay, looks like uh, Bob has disconnected because Bob is not receiving all the messages. Let's start from scratch. I will just refresh Alice. Alice is joined. I'll refresh Bob. Bob has joined. I will set the board for Alice. Click on ready to play. I'll set the board for Bob. 
and then click on ready to play the opponent board has showed up now i will send the move message which shows here and voila so when bob clicked on one of the ships it, uh, when bob sorry when alice clicked on their opponent board bob intercepted that message and indicated that one of his ships has been hit next step is to uh, for bob to inform alice that they have actually scored a point so right now we are sending a move message from the opponent board to the uh, player board now from bob's player board we need to send the message to alice's opponent board that they were successfully able to hit let's go and do that now I will now define a new uh, chat message. So let's go back to game details. And along with the move message, I will define another message called uh, move reply. We will rename its title to reply. And instead of move, it will say hit and let's leave it a num uh, string itself so this value will either be hit or miss great so remember that right now we started from sending a message from the opponent board and intercepting it on the player board now we will go the other way so i will go back to the player board once i have updated the player board i will also now create a new message so <clears throat> i will create a uh, let's let's write this down create a new move reply message send this message to the opponent board so the process is going to be very similar uh, except we will only change the payloads so we have already created a function called send message but uh, i'll just copy this and call this send move reply message instead of using chat message it will use move reply uh, okay we need to export this from the game utils because I believe move reply is not getting exported. There we go. And let's go back to the player board. Say get it from here instead of message. It will, in fact, we don't really need any props here because the sender is just going to be the player passed to this uh, component. And instead of message, we will say hit. So let's actually pass the hit as a string uh, and yeah then we are going to encode it using move reply message and the rest of the code is going to be similar we are going to push using the use light push uh, hook and in case of an error we are just going to raise an alert let's go back to our original function and now that we have updated the opponent book we are going to say await send move reply and uh, let's first calculate hit. So const hit is equal to if does ship exist on, let's just copy this here and does ship exist on this, it's a hit. If it does not, it's a miss. And then we will say await send move reply. Pass this hit here and we done with it. Let's see what happens when this move reply message goes back. It should update in our filter states. And in the opponent board now, we are already getting the latest message. So I'll create another use effect to intercept the latest message. This is very similar to what we had done in the why is it red okay need to move it below the props so if latest message just console log the latest message 
let me very quickly get rid of some extra console logs just so you don't get confused <clears throat> Uh, it's like we don't need this function. We can get rid of it. So, yeah, great. Uh, in the opponent board, let's log the latest message and see what we get. Uh, once again, I'm going to have to refresh the room, create a new one. Uh, in case of error, we refresh again. Yes. There we go. So P1 has joined. Let's also get Bob to join. Mm -mm. It's like something broke because I'm not seeing Bob's messages. Let's try to refresh again. There we go. So we now have both players joined and gonna uh, Ready the board for Alice. Just put these ships randomly. Click on ready to play. Do the same thing for Bob. Click on ready to play. And we put, now have both the boards. And uh, now let's look at where Bob's ship is. So it's on the first cell. Let's see if I click on this. Oh, looks like we got an error. Hmm. Cannot read properties of undefined. Let's see why we are getting this. Man. Let's make sure we are not sending the properties incorrectly. La, what are we getting in the latest message? Hmm. Uh, looks like we are accidentally sending move here. I think I know why. Let's go to game utils. Ah, we are using this ID, so it's confusing a hit and a move. So we need to refresh this to set six. And let's try to send this message again. There we go. So now Bob's uh, board is updated. Let's try that one more time, but this time from Bob. So I'm going to try to hit this ship for us and it's getting updated. The only thing left to do now is to update the opponent board as well. Let's look at what we are getting. We are getting that the latest message is a hit. So similar to how we handled in the player board, now we need to handle the move reply in the opponent board. So we are getting this latest message here. I'll define a function here called handle latest message. And it's going to take the latest message and let's put a const. Let's make it async. And uh, again, if this message was sent by the user themselves, we don't need to do anything. So we will add the safety check where latest message dot sender equal equal player. We don't do anything. And we also need to check that the latest message has a hit because the opponent board only needs to handle that. So we'll return if that is empty as well. Finally, let's handle the hit. So what I'll do is handle a uh, define a function called handle hit. So let's go at the top. We will say const handle hit is equal to it's only going to take hit, which is a string. And let's go back at the bottom. You will see that if I set the value of the cell as hit, it will show this image. And if I set it as miss, it will show this image. So all I need to do in handle hit now is that I will create a new board by deploying the existing state of the board. Then I will again get the row and call from the move. So if you remember, when we were sending the move, we had set it as part of the state of the board. 
so that we could use it when the response comes back. So I'll get the row index from the move. So parse int uh, move dot split over a comma and get the first value. Similarly, we will get the call index parse int split and the first value. Now in the new board, we will set the row index and the call index as hit, which will either be again hit or miss, and then set port to the new board. Finally, let's call this function. Oops, our handle latest message and name it wrong. Let's define the type. Uh, let's say handle hit with <clears throat> latest message. So I'd say if latest message dot move, handle hit latest message dot move. Great. So finally, we will call this function inside the use effect that is looking at the latest message. Let's go and see all of this in action. So again, I'll try to hit a ship from Alice's board and let's see what happens. Hopefully the connection is not broken. So on Bob's board, I try to hit this ship through Alice. When I do that, hmm, looks like something broke. Let's look at what the latest message is. Okay, so the sender was P2, which is what is to be expected. Let's see if our function was called or not. I will console log it here. Let's see, try that again. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. So I am getting the latest message. Let's look at what we did wrong. So the sender is P2. And if the latest message dot sender equal equal player, we return, which is the right thing. And if it does not have a hit, we ah uh, I see. So if the latest message dot hit, this is supposed to be hit dot move. Hmm. Why is it an error? I see. So in our message, I think we hit define the hit as a number. We need to change that to a string. Great. Let's try that again. Hmm. I think the connection broke. Let's just start from scratch to make sure it's not a node tier problem. We might have to refresh a couple of times. Sometimes Waco can take longer than usual to connect. All right. So, looks like Alice did connect, but the messages did not go through. Well, let's try refreshing again. <clears throat> See if it works the second time. There we go. Uh, we'll also refresh Bob to get Bob a clean state. There we go. Hmm, but looks like Bob did not inform Alice. Uh, I think it should be fine. We can debug that later. Let's set up the boards for both of them. If this fails, we might have to set up. Hmm. Okay, let's try refreshing Bob one more time. Because Bob doesn't seem to be getting any messages. There we go. Let's set up the board for Bob. Hopefully one last time. Bob is ready. Let's get Alice ready. Set up the board for Alice. Click on ready to play. There we go. Okay, so for the moment of truth, I click on Bob's board and voila. <clears throat> so I clicked on the opponent board on Alice. 
that sent a message to Bob's uh, player board where it was a hit and then Bob's player board sent a message to Alice's opponent board saying it was a hit. Let me try this circle. It was a miss and it did not show up here. Similarly, when Bob hits their board, it sends a message on Alice's board. So there you have it. We have created an entire player-to-player -player game using only Wapu protocol and absolutely zero lines of backend code. You can use this code as a reference, both the starter kit and the complete code is available on dblock and GitHub. And you can use those as a reference for code snippets or as starter templates, however you wish. Thank you.